Colorful. Celebrating. Colorful. Windrush Day. Colorful, Colorful Radio. Radio. Good morning and welcome back to the Windrush Day celebrations. We are here live and direct from Pop Brixton celebrating all things Windrush. And I'm here with my girl, Janelle. Hey, in hey, the hey. building. Yes, in the building, <laughs> representing in your lovely outfit. Um, so today we have lots of interviews lined up and really excited to talk to some amazing people, some local people, um, you know, people that are doing different projects. And on that note, I am joined, or we are joined by Clovis Lowe and Kumea. Welcome, welcome to you both. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so firstly, um, Clovis, <laughs> you are one half of the Oxygen Arts Project, yeah? Oxygen Arts, yeah, that's a correct. charity. Um, just tell us a bit about the, the charity and what you do. Well, Oxygen Arts is a full service marketing agency and we um, take, you know, post, <coughs> post profits, we will plow the money back into training young people um, in creative digital skills, mm -hmm. um, photography, videography, design, art, um, theatre skills and um, writing, creative writing. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things. It's the chance for us to give back. Yes, amazing. So you said young people. How young? Because I'm wondering if I can get in there, because that sounds amazing. <laughs> well, we'll take all. But, um, <laughs> yes, young at heart indeed. Um, <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, 14 if, um, through to 25, 26, you know. Okay. But I've just missed it. Just missed it, that, that mark. But no. <laughs> <laughs> you flatter me, you flatter me. Um, so, yeah, so what, and what inspired you and your, your wife? I understand it was your, you and your wife that set up the charity. What inspired that, um, that decision to start that? Well, originally we um, started Oxygen Arts to work with young people in the Caribbean um, and the wider, um, you know, back home, basically. Nice. Um, and we were originally working with young people in Grenada, um, with new um, new low organization which is a training organization for young people out there okay. um, as well as we trained young people in different um, a couple of orphanages out there oh, okay. um, and uh, um, and the basic the idea is to basically to give them digital skills mm -hmm. that they could work remotely mm -hmm. in the rest of the world so in the west so they would have be able to earn European or American money in yes. the Caribbean without moving um, yeah. so that was a kind of um, initial pr um, premise, but yeah. also as well um, to in encourage um, exchange. Yes. You know, so... A cultural know, uh, exchange. Yeah, you know, exchange, yeah. cultural exchange, not only just for, you know, for them, but for us. So we can Absolutely. bring young people over there and they can come over here. Yeah. Um, but then lockdown hit. Oh, um, yes. As the, dreaded the, the, as it dreaded lockdown. Yeah. Messed up everyone's plans. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but then what that allowed us to do was mm -hmm. to focus on... Um, working with young people here. Okay. And um, yeah, we got a project with Lambeth Elevate and uh, we created um, a, sh well, a short film called Two and a Half Questions and that's where um, we started to work with a number of young people here mm -hmm. and with um, Kamaya, this wonderful young person, the yes. young talent that we have here. Amazing. Kamaya, come come we are bringing you in in a second. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to just um, ask Clovis again, um, you know, with that, that, with that project, I love the name. It sounds very intriguing. Why two and a half questions? Right. Well, with two and a half questions, um, we asked as many black people as we could get, which totaled out to, you know, because as it was through lockdown, um, it <laughs> totaled out to about 35 um, black people um, from the ages of 14 to 86. And we oh, asked wow. them the okay. same two and a half questions. Um, right. The first question was, how has your race shaped who you are? Okay. The second question is, what's your hope for the future? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> the half question is, how old are you? Right, it's, you okay. Know, you didn't have to think about it. It's a question, you know, you just might question. not want to say it, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And how, how responsive were and how receptive were people, especially the young people, I'm just interested to find out how were they in answering the questions, because they're quite deep questions that, you know, quite thought-provoking and introspective. How were they in yeah. terms of exploring the question for themselves? Well, it was actually really quite interesting. The young people were really um, engaged with the question because it gave them a chance to not only just think about, but also explore their own experiences of race. Yeah. And, I mean, during the time of, you know, George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement, mm. it ha really has been brought to the fore for a lot of young Absolutely. people. So yeah. um, it's an issue that's 
on their mind, mm -hmm. even if it wasn't before, a um, number of little incidences that may or may not have happened to them allows them to reflect and go, oh, mm -hmm. that was a negative thing. At the right. time, I might have taken it as just something, yeah. but they were able to go, no, that was that, and I now re I recognize it as an uh, incident that involved their race. Yeah, yeah. And, and just wondering about the logistics, actually, because you said you had about 35, 35 people. Well done yeah. for getting that many people. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, what was that like, and how long did that take to kind of coordinate during the lockdown period? Um, it was long, arduous, <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it took, it took a while, but we asked friends, we got people to refer people, right. um, and it really just, you know, it really just came through where, mm. I mean, as you, you know, you, you, you pointed, the, quest, the, the, the title itself kind of provokes a question, it's like, oh, yeah. what is this? Yeah, it's um, intriguing, so, definitely. Yeah, like, so, what's that? Yeah. yeah, so that was um, one of the things that once I kind of heard, it's like, oh, okay, and then mm. you say you we're asking black people, and yeah. it's just like, oh, okay, yes. Yeah. And these questions are, yeah. And so it, it allowed people to go, no, th I think that, yeah, this is, this is interesting. Yeah. So and the fact that it's only two and a half questions, you know, it's not like a long questionnaire. Yeah, exactly. It's, you not, know, like it's not going to take up too much of your time. You know, usually that's the kind of preamble that you've got to kind of convince people. Yeah. But yeah, yeah no, fantastic. I'd yeah. love, to, love to see that. So it's, it's, you know, is it possible to view it? Yeah, well, now? currently it's available on, where there is, we're having a screening on Sunday. You okay. can find details about that on Eventbrite. Yes. Um, but also as well, it is part of the um, Windrush Caribbean Film Festival. Um, we've been accepted as, um, as part of that. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, you can get that. It's part of their online offering. So oh. you, um, yeah, you can tune into the... Windrush Caribbean Film Festival and find out how you can view two and a half questions. Fantastic. So listeners, you've heard, you can also watch this amazing documentary. I'm definitely going to check that out. So thank you, Clovis, for sharing that with us. Yeah, we'll definitely be tuning in, right? Yeah. It sounds wonderful. And like I already said, um, you know, it's just beautiful that you've, through the lockdown period, which was really tough, that you've created this mm. wonderful project that leaves a legacy. And what really intrigues me is, and, and just listening to what you've said is the intergenerational connectivity that mm -hmm. you've created through yeah. just two and a half questions. Mm -hmm. Not only allowing like young people to explore their own identities, but the older generation, you said that the oldest person was 80? 86, 86, yeah. 86, right? So yeah. allowing the older generation to also explore yeah. and, and reflect, I guess, on their identity and, and kind of sharing those those experiences and that understanding and bringing the generations together that's, yeah that's that's really quite magical and quite special mm -hmm. yeah no it really was interesting to hear <coughs> the older generation not only just recount some of the their stories um but also as well hearing their thoughts about hopes for the future mm -hmm. and the things that they think are important for people to know mm -hmm. um the you know the, the bits of knowledge that they've are able to pass on. Mm -hmm. It's just really nice to be able and to. And th that exchange goes two ways. Mm -hmm. It's not just from the, you know, of course our elders have such rich knowledge and wisdom and experience that we should all respect and want to learn from. But but also the older generation can learn from the younger generation. And, mm -hmm. and that's where I want to speak to Kumaya because your project has actually lived what it's uh, you know what it was designed to do, and you, you've got involved as, as as a young photographer, haven't you, in the project? Um, and you responded to the photog the photographs that were on the Getty Images Black History Cultural Collection, and you created an outdoor exhibition. So tell us more about that, Kimaya. Um, well, I went around Brixton and I took pictures of iconic people in iconic places and I kind of just got them to tell their story and how it's been for them like here and like comparing it to how it used to be and how it is now kind of thing. Yeah. That's really, really special. C so can I ask you a half question then? <laughs> sure. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 15. Wow. wow. Can I just give you a little clap yeah. because, yeah, please. That is so impressive. And you, you didn't feel, you know, shy or, because you mean, you're just sitting here quite, you know, quiet, you've been <laughs> patiently waiting for your turn. <laughs> but, you know, you obviously had to have a lot of confidence. How, what was the response like in terms of just going out there? How was that for you? Um, 
It was kind of nerve wracking and I can imagine. I am kind of a shy person, so it was a little bit difficult, but I feel mm. like photography kind of helps me to be more confident and more open to going up to people and asking yeah. them to like take pictures. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just so so intrigued that you're at such a young age impressed you and impressed yeah. really really impressed and inspired um that at such a young age you have got this vision to create this project where did that vision come from um hmm. i mean what inspired you well i guess i like using photography to hear and kind of visualize people's stories and kind of hear what they have to say about their past, mm. their present, and what they hope for the future. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And how many people would you say you photographed in total and spoke to? Maybe 10. Wow, okay. A nice amount. Yeah. Can I ask you, this, I know this isn't really something that usually creatives and artists do, but do you have a, a favorite piece? that you've taken, capture? <laughs> <laughs> or a memorable piece then, to not show any bias? Yeah. Um, well, I took a picture of a dancer in front of Brixton Station, so I quite liked taking that picture. Mm. I thought it was very iconic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And where can those who are listening and those who are watching out there see some of your work, Kimaya? Um, well, the pictures are in Brixton Recreation and, yeah. Centre. So just, just next door to here, essentially. Yeah. We're down at Pop Brixton, by the way, and we'll be here all day. So if you want to come down and check out the Windrush Day celebration, myself and Iola will be here all day with Colourful Radio broadcasting yes. live with loads of guests. And right next door, you can check out Kimaya's work as well. Yes, I'll definitely be popping in there to see your work and my um, excellent. Yeah, I just want to say that the easiest way to go and view those images um, are <clears throat> when you get to the wreck, walk up the slope, and there's a series on that um, upward slope. Um, and then as you walk, get to the top, you walk around, you can take a left, there's further ones there. And then as you're walking as if to go back down the stairs, before you go down the stairs, take a right, um, take a look at the right, and there's a little... Um, area there which has got a lot of the Getty images so yeah it's like a little photo walk that you can like do a little tour around like yeah a photo a walk photo tour. tour yeah yeah an amazing immersive experience that's amazing so I guess what's next for you guys what's next for Oxygen Arts what's next for Kumaya as well um well for next for Oxygen Arts we're currently working on a couple of projects <clears throat> um the next one is we're working on a documentary um, called Black British Ballet, um, yeah. and which is documenting um, the basically all the Black British ba Black British Ballet it's dancers. A bit of a you did well. You did Black well. Black British Ballet dancers <laughs> um, from the last century. So Hi. we're gathering um, as many interviews with all the Black British trained ballet dancers. Mm. Um, and we're putting together a documentary, but that's also in collaboration with um, Sandy Bourne, um, Dr. Sandy Bourne, who did her PhD in um, ba um, <coughs> ballet um, dance, and her PhD thesis was on basically is, you know, ballet institutionally racist. I mean, that's not the exact title, but right, that's yeah. ultimately what the question was. Um, mm -hmm. And so based on her work, um, we are basically exploring the black british ballet dancers history mm -hmm. the legacy and um we're going we're creating a website that's going to be able to um document all of that as well as the, do the video documentary uh -huh. um and another little project that we've got going which will we're going to be start working on is a short narrative um film trailer for a larger you know film project um called liberation day which okay. is exploring a uh, post-pandemic society that has had some significant changes um, and <clears throat> how black people find a way to resist or um, overcome these changes mm -hmm. in the new society. So that's one of the um, kind of other projects that we're So you not know, much we're then, on. not much. <laughs> not much, but I mean, you know, I mean, it's... Yeah, no, you're, you know, that's 
both projects sound phenomenal. I mean, yeah. this project is phenomenal in, in itself. What was your um, biggest, did you have any sort of things that stood out for you that you discovered or learned on this current project from, you know, over the pandemic? And was there anything that you kind of took away from what anybody said that really stood out to you? Um, well, not to give anything away, but one of the things that um, stood out from the two and a half questions um, documentary mm. is uh, education. Um, a lot of people still seem, um, well not still, but th feel that education is still one of the strongest ways of us getting out of um, oppression in some ways, shape mm. or form. Mm. Um, because once you know you've educated yourself, you can then push further forward. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things about education it does allow you to leap a, a certain st a, a level rather than having to work your way up. Mm -hmm. Once you're qualified, you get to enter the the work market in a certain way. But also, as well, um, yes, from two and a half questions, the the oppression is still there. Yeah. We're still um, dealing with it, mm -hmm. um, and. <clears throat> past wrongs need to be dealt with mm. in order for us to move on yeah. but actually as i said education is still one of the strongest weapons that we have i mean it's free we all need to you know i mean the, the old adage knowledge is power you can't mm. you can't knock that yeah. and it's one of the things that you cannot take that can never be taken away from you yeah I, mean, I just want to correct that a little bit applied knowledge is power because yes. you have to apply it well Some absolutely people just yes intellectualize i've been yeah, talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. this all week sorry so i'm just like yeah no you're, no, but you're, it's, you're, you're you know too, what i mean yeah. and you're actually doing that in terms of the work that you're actually doing and, and making it a, a creative and enjoyable project yeah um i wanted to also ask you um about the you know the connection between the younger generation and the older generation that must have been so beautiful just to kind of you know, be a part of, you know, observing, you know, what was that like for you, like, just personally? It was wonderful, because what I did was, you know, as part of the project, it was training the young people yeah. in shooting, lighting, miking up the whole, um, the, the whole situation, the whole mm -hmm. interview scenario. Um, and so I would basically, after having, after training them, we'd arrange these um, interviews, We'd get there, and the young people would set up the equipment. They would mic up the, the, the people, yeah. and they would run the whole show. Wow. Um, and then also as well, getting to watch the young people interact and listen to the stories of people um, that um, are older than them, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just to see how they were just engaging with the you know other people's stories. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot of the information now that we get is either online and you know what I mean, yeah. but the the actual inter the, the personal relationship the personal face to face yeah. it's so important to actually hear someone tell their story and to f get that connection mm -hmm. it's you know so that was just a wonderful thing to see yes. um yeah the young people just engaging with the stories of the people from uh, older than them or yeah. even you know similar no absolutely and it's yeah it's just beautiful what you've done honestly i can't salute you and your wife enough yeah. and kamaya well done for your part in it as well cuz we need you. You are the next generation. You are the present generation. And thank you for coming down. You know, the theme this year is we are here. And so it's actually lovely to have your young, beautiful presence here with us, oldies. You know, <laughs> all of us. For yourself. All of, all, right, all, right. <laughs> all of us together here. We are here. We so are here. we are here. You know, really proud to, to have, you know, even just hear what you've done yeah. oh. so you know congratulations yeah. and well done you know all the best for you and your future endeavors both of you yeah and Thank actually you Ola, just before yeah. we let them go mm -hmm. because you mentioned clovis that you have there some really fascinating projects coming up i'm sure people out there listening and watching will want to know either how they can get involved oh, yeah, absolutely, how yeah. they can support and where they can find you so yeah so you yeah you can reach know. us at oxygen arts all one word um, dot com. That's our website, and um, we're on Facebook and um, Oxygen Arts underscore UK on Instagram. So yeah, I mean, please, yeah, we've got the details about um, the project, the photography project that Kimai has done at um, Brixton Rec. We've got information about the um, 
the documentary Two and a Half Questions and the work that we do with young people. And as I said, we're a full service marketing agency. So yeah, man, just call us up. Yes, <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you, Clovis and Camille. Thank you so much again for speaking with us today. And you know, what are you looking forward to today? You're going to be hanging around. You're going to be, you know, enjoying some food, dance. You're going to be part of the. Of the course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. He's like, what yes, do you mean? Yes, the sun's out. I mean, it's, you know, in Brixton, it's, yeah, man, just, yeah. I mean, I hear there's going to be some pan playing. So. Still pans are coming yes. up very shortly. Yes, 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 indeed. yes. All right, well, thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day. We're going to just head over now to listen, head over, listen to some new music right here. We are here in Pop Brixton.